your damage was was that mainly in the garden? Yeah, it was the border wall that mm. collapsed, and I made a claim. Yeah, uh, there was no fuss at all whatsoever. They sent their the only thing that troubled me was different companies. They appoint different companies. Once you you inform them about mm. the claim, they get away and then they've got this builders and that builders and so all the strangers started coming, mm -hmm. knocking on my door and getting the estimates and whatnot. Well, I, had, I actually had no water. They had to turn it off from the mains. For how long? On and off for two weeks. Yeah. And they did say, we're going to put you up somewhere, mm -hmm. but they yeah. didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but Did you push that or...? I, you know, I couldn't really just have two small kids. It, mm. That was even more of a nightmare. Um, so they would sometimes, some days, be able to turn it on at mm -hmm. night time, so, you know, all the bar, um, bathing, whatever. Mm. Um, but what I did get out of them was food. Oh, right. um, like um, <laughs> dry rations, coupon <laughs> things, oh, right. things, yes. Yeah. Because I had no kitchen, no. I had nothing. No. Um, and as I said to the loss adjuster, maybe it works better if you're a woman, I guess. But I did say to him, I've got two kids, yeah. what can I do? <laughs> and he went, all right, I'll give you money. <laughs> so, <laughs> he did. <laughs> it was great. What about Lou's though? Presumably, could, could you flush Lou's? No. Mm. I went out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm lucky I have a lot of good neighbours. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And were there parts of the house that couldn't be occupied, even though you were sort of camping in your house? I had uh, no kitchen, no lounge. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And everything from the kitchen and the lounge was in my dining room. Right. So that was a whole downstairs gone. So I had the playroom. Yeah. That's it. Gosh. Yeah. What about you, Penny? Did you...? Well, uh, the smell of it, it left a smell there for, for time, so yeah. I had to start my mum's anyway. Oh, right. Um, but then, and also because of our safety, the front door, we were scared to, to be, to stay there and also the door was, was hanging off. Yeah. I had, they had to send him the emergency home service out to, oh um, home, emergency home response yeah, to come, safe. to make it a bit safe and all my, my, um, camera got ruined as well, so then, they paid him out quite quick for the cameras, so we mm. had loads of them installed, but then when they were starting the work at the beginning, um, I mean, we had no toilet upstairs because the pipe outside was destroyed. Gosh. So we had just the toilet downstairs. Yeah. So it was a bit of a worry for my daughter when she'd get, because she's only 12, well at that time she was 11. Yeah. And she'd have to get up and go downstairs to the toilet and in the night she'd be petrified. So I had all of that to mm -hmm. deal with and she'd just, she was with me constantly. Yeah, exactly. And then when the work was being done, um, we'd either just stay out for the day or... And lots of things were kind of barricaded and into the kitchen so we couldn't really use the kitchen while they were doing one room so it was a headache, it was awful, it was a nightmare actually. Oh, no. We yeah. managed to get through it. Was it easy to find out who to contact to make, start making your claim? No. No, no it was horrible, it happened <coughs> at night oh, um, and they said 24 hour Service. Not so. Nobody was at the end of the phone. It was horrible. When you can see water coming in, yeah. it's pouring the rain outside, and you can't do anything to stop it. it. It's frightening. You just want to speak to a human who can supposedly sort it out for you. Mine were brilliant. Right. Oh, so happy with them. I mean, right. um, I contacted them. What happened with my house was early hours of the morning, so I didn't contact them till. Uh, late afternoon the following day um, but they were very good they referred to different obviously it's referred to different departments mm. but they gave me a reference number I had them call me immediately arrange mm. for them to come round take details from me it was quite they were very good actually very very good I was very happy with them mm. okay Alan uh, well, I, I, I mean I didn't have any hassle once the claim was going through I had a hassle till I got to NHBC in the sense that I had a home serve contract at the time right. um, who when you ring them up and tell them the problem they don't cover flus. Right. I had another um, um, like insurance through one of my bank accounts and mm -hmm. it was exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, the um, insurance company, because I don't need buildings insurance because I'm in the flat, so oh. the, the insurance company for the block of flats right. weren't interested in yeah. my claim at all. 
And that's when I um, contacted an HBC. I, I found it on the website. I'm sure, I think these, because it's about a year ago now, I, I'm sure I found it on the website and found to my astonishment that they actually covered flues as well as the basic structure of the building. You didn't yeah. have a build mark warranty document? Well, we, yeah, I was thinking about that when you mentioned that before, and I am, um, say, 60, 70% certain I haven't got that. Did you buy that flat from you? Yes. Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And Jerome bought his as well? Well, I bought it brand new, but, but the NHBC certificate was originally in the name of the, the builder. developer builder. Right. Uh, but what he had, and I don't know, and I certainly never got any proper documents. See, our builder went bust. Oh, right. And it was taken over by the developer. Right. Developers is okay. a very, very difficult company to deal with indeed. Right. Um, and I don't think I have got one of those. I'll go home and look now. <laughs> I was annoyed actually, as I mentioned earlier, um, when I phoned them initially up to say, you know, I have this problem, and they said, well, it's damp, you've got mm. a problem, and they mm. literally put fear of God mm. in me, mm. saying, you know, you're going to have to spend all this money. Um, and then I wouldn't have had to have got the builder if I had a little bit more, you know, understanding of what the problem was. Mm. Um, and then I wouldn't have had to have paid him to gravel the outside of my house. Mm. And I wouldn't have had to have called a damp guy in to check it. You know, and all of that took about a month, maybe even longer, before it was definitely a leak. Yeah. And then when I got, um, we got two quotes, the loss adjuster, you know, thank God he mm. actually organised the builders. But the first guy said, look, mate, if I can't find a leak, I'll just say I found one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so then you won't get done with all this extra <laughs> stuff. So I'm like, okay. So it was just a bit weird, the whole thing. Yeah. I, I actually uh, appreciate they sent their own builders in mm -hmm. to, to have a look at the damage and uh, work out the cost of repair. Mm -hmm. So I was with him all the time, <coughs> offered him a cup of tea, check him up, and find out exactly what he's on about. Mm -hmm. I had lots of fallen trees, which the insurance would not cover, to have them removed. Each tree, I took an estimate to have it removed from, from my premises, would cost me near enough 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about at least three thousand pound further cost. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I, I was talking to him, and I learned exactly how he's working out the estimate. So this is what I did with my builder. I said, "You put in an estimate. Do not mention fallen trees, but they have to be included mm -hmm. in the cost." <laughs> so he worked it out very nicely. <laughs> I'm not sure we'll put that on the phone. <laughs> but it, it, I was very surprised when they said uh, they wouldn't cover, uh, you know. But what I found is when it comes to making a claim, when it comes to buying insurance, the sales is all very lovely. When it comes to making a claim, the precise wording of the policy mm -hmm. is interrogated in absolute detail mm -hmm. by the company to see if there's, you know, if you're covered or if there's a, an exit route for them. And you really feel under the spotlight uh, you know, we're making a claim because suddenly the, the minute detail of the policy are absolutely interrogated. When you take the policy, it, it's all it's yeah. barely even considered yeah. as something you might exactly. want to look at. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think as a sort of responsible organisations, NHBC or anyone else, when setting the policy, should be very clear with people about what is covered and what yeah. isn't covered. Mm -hmm. A different point. But. What you, yes, did you have documentation from your insurers? Yes. And did what, you previous? Or? Yes, I mean, did you have it yeah. lying around, or did you just think, yes. oh, I'm with A and I'll... No, I no, had it of like a fault. Yeah, yeah, I never yeah. read yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> don't, it's your book. How can you read every bit? There's so yeah, much yeah, you, you just go over the main pages, yeah. they say, and that's very quick. Oh, I like going through my excesses and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you miss and stuff. But had you read it before you had to make a claim? No. Oh. <laughs> I'd read the bullet points, but you don't read it. Yes. You can't yeah. read it all. And did you read it once you've made your claim? Oh, yeah. When they point it out to me, especially yeah. about the damp and this is not covered, and you, oh, I was like, oh, God, I wouldn't yeah. say that. And yeah, they were right. <laughs> yeah. I just don't trust big companies, so I read it before I rang up. Right. Because I knew there'd be trouble. <laughs> 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 Boy, was I right. <laughs> no. 
So. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I suppose I just it's not very British, but I kind of want to see it through. I mean, I work in well, maybe in the legal profession, where I kind of represent the disabled at tribunals, and I'm very keen to fight for case law for exact wording and get their benefits back. Which, you know, and actually, that's why I have that process. I would complain yes. to get what I'm entitled to, because you know the big corporate shareholders in London are going to get everything, so I'm not what I'm entitled to. So I'll see it through to the end. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to because I just went into London and sat there. So they they came out and said, "What would it take for you to go away?" <laughs> And, and so, that, that, so you know, we never got to fruition. I just withdrew the complaint because they right. they, okay. they paid they paid more. Can I say something about NHBC? I'd always imagined it was. I didn't know it was an insurance company. I thought it was some government quango that just like covered it and sent people out. There was a problem. I hadn't realised because the word national doesn't seem to be an insurance company. I didn't realise that at all. Well, if it's national, it means it covers the whole country. Yeah, I just assumed it was some kind and of government think... appointed thing. I didn't realise it was a private insurance company. But this is the point. Right. Given that the that they would always be dealing with either brand new properties or quite new properties. Yes. Um, you know, my commentary, because I had this experience, is I, is I think they, they need to help purchasers, because uh, it will always be about purchasers at that point, because they're taking over the, the, um, the warranty. Uh, you know, as part of the, the legal process, they should have some very clear bundle that, that, that is transferred. Well, it exists. The owner <laughs> but it may exist, but it's not. It's not a very clear <laughs> process because I, I never received. I, I think I, I think I got a photocopy of, of, of some you know formal mm-hmm. paper that had a number on. But I was assured by my lawyers that that would provide the backup mm-hmm. should there be a problem when it comes to NHBC. Uh, and I took comfort in, in that comment from the lawyer. You, you should but, get a nice colour brochure, well, A four. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying is that I think NHBC in, in this context of this conversation should make sure that all of those standards and procedures are very clear and are publicised so the public know that's what to expect when purchasing a new property. Your solicitor should have given it to you. Well, maybe, but I didn't know. No, no, I mean, no. I didn't no, know. no so so right, if yes. we all understood what, that, oh. what to Precious expect, part. then yes. we would demand it. But so, no idea. Certainly, I never got an mm. A4 code brochure that I right. know. Right. Um, How often do you buy a brand new house? Mm-hmm. In other words, never, mm-hmm. never do it, yeah. so you don't know.